Hello students, welcome back to the course on operations management and uh, today we are going to learn about the project management. Project management lecture is going to have two parts and uh, a theory part and an illustration. Today we are going to cover the theory part of project management. Let us get into understanding the project management. Before we actually deep dive into the subject, let us first understand as to when we use the tool called project management. Is it something that we can use for every single task that we carry out? Or is it something that we can use only for select activities? We carry out several tasks in our professional life towards achieving certain objectives. Let us look at one of such objectives like the one that we saw in our first lecture, we want to double the contribution to the fixed cost. Suppose that is the task that we are taking uh, for our, um, for a, as an example. Let's try to put this uh, uh, I don't know, into a graph. Okay. Uh, I try to explain the situation using a graph on the x-axis I am taking the time and the y-axis is any value. Our objective is to double, double the contribution. Say now it is at uh, say $10,000 and we want to take it to $20,000. This is our target. We have seen that in the case of Fisher Technologies, <coughs> we had three options. One, the marketing option, the finance option, and the operations management option. The head of operations management suggested that we reduce the operating cost by 20%, which can double the contribution is what we have seen. So currently we are at this level of say 10K and we want to take it to say 20k. So this is our target. Okay, and we are here right now. <clears throat> you have two ways of achieving this target. One is that you carry out small improvements like uh, certain continuous improvements in the process, improving the efficiency over a period of time and then you can achieve the objective through a period of time say this, say suppose this takes about two years, okay, this is the time. You have an alternate approach. You simply eliminate certain manual activities through automation or any other process and you jump start from the next month onwards or next three months, you jump start, you are, um, take your contribution to double its level this way. You have two options. This is option one and this is option two. What is that you will select? Will you select option one or you will select option two? It depends upon the time that is available to you one and the second one what it takes to jump start from 10k to 20k. Taking these aspects into consideration, you will select either option 1 or option 2. If you decide to proceed through option 1, then you use something called a daily work management. Alternatively, you decide to use option 2, then you use project management. Now you understand as to when you should use a project management approach and when you should use a daily work management approach. A daily work management is something wherein the improvement is continuous over a long period of time and in small capsules, quantum. The improvements are quantum over a period of time and it takes considerable amount of time for you to reach there. Whereas in the option two, you have to invest something substantial 
in order to gain the benefits substantially in a short period of time. So now let us see when in terms of uh, statements when can we use the project management. What is that that qualifies a task for project management? The task has a specific goal and deadline. If a task has a specific goal and a deadline like a field complaint or complaint resolution then you will go for a project management approach. The job is unique compared to the daily work like a new product development. A new product development is not made on a daily basis. You produce something which is already developed but when you want to launch a new product you need to start something and then end it at a particular time from which you will be able to launch a new product. So this kind of an application you will use project management. Work contains complex interrelated tasks like acquisition and merger. These kind of activities you will use project management which has a definite start and an end. And last the job cut, cuts across the organizational functions like an ERP implementation, enterprise resource planning implementation wherein you will do it right from the sales till the logistic department. Every single function is involved in the implementation. So for such a complex project wherein you cut across the organizational functions, you will use a project management approach. Okay. So let us move on to understanding it still better. Project management as a start, a starting point has three broad paces. Those three paces are planning, scheduling and controlling. These are all the three broad paces of project management. In the case of planning, the set of activities that you do are one is first defining the project. You need to define the project. In our case, the project definition is doubling the contribution by so and so date is what is the definition of the project. Doubling the contribution by so and so date is the definition of the project. The goal setting is already addressed there. The goal setting is that the time is one goal and the second one is doubling the contribution. So doubling the contribution is the goal and you have a specified time for it. It will involve several activities like installing an automated machine or something like that. All these activities have to be listed. How to list them we will see now. And when we identify all these activities, we will also estimate a time for each of the activities. The next important activity is to organize yourself with the required resources in terms of uh, people, in terms of infrastructure, etc. Then we, we proceed to scheduling. Now that we know the activities and we know the uh, timelines, first thing is to relate the activities with each other. There are several activities which will be related with each other. That means that you cannot carry out a particular activity without completing its previous activity. So you need to identify for every activity what is its predecessor and what is its next activity. And relating the resources for each of those activities you have to identify the resource and allocate them. So the, the organization will get related to each one of the activities. From there we get into the execution and the project is progressing. You will see whether the project is progressing as per the timeline, as per the resources allocated, as per the costs and is the quality of the project running as per the plan. So in the, in the, in the case of controlling you will be monitoring it continuously on resources front, cost front, quality front and timelines front. Okay. And you have an essential feedback system here based on the control or the monitoring. If you simply monitor and leave it there is no fun in it. So when you monitor something and you find that it is not as per the plan then you give the feedback to the planning uh, function and then you redo the planning, redo the scheduling and then redo the controlling. So this kind of a feedback has to happen continuously in order to make sure that the project completes on time. This is a very basic 
simplistic model of a project management but as we proceed we will see more complex situations we can use several tools and techniques for doing these or carrying out these activities the planning scheduling and controlling for each one of them we can use several project management tools and techniques some of them are wbs which is called work breakdown structure the second tool is gantt chart these two are predominantly used in the planning stage and to an extent in the scheduling stage what do you call as cpm and pert the critical path method and program evaluation and review technique these tools will be used in the scheduling and when it comes to the controlling you will predominantly be using run charts we are going to see wbs gantt chart cpm and pert we are not going to see run charts because it is uh, uh, not an essential part of a project management you will be covering it in your quality management uh, to topics let us try to understand what is work breakdown structure this looks to be very simple but unless otherwise we put our effort into this wbs right at the beginning you will not be able to manage your project well the reason for that is many projects fail because we have not planned it correctly we have not anticipated certain activities we have not captured certain constraints these are all the reasons why the projects get delayed and work breakdown structure though it's a very simple tool it is very very essential for a successful project management a set of project objectives and uh, the team is created first the project objectives are set and the team is created this is what we have seen it in the planning stage now what we do is that we have to break down all complex activities into manageable parts a project by itself is a complex activity doubling the contribution is a complex activity that itself is an activity and that complex activity has to be broken down into the next level of simply simple activities the first level of breakdown is known as sub components for the complex activity the second level of uh, breakdown is at the detailed components level and the last one is at a micro activity level we have to get into as detailed as possible in wbs so that we will not miss any activity and when we miss an activity we miss the time uh, component of that as well which will not be plugged into the uh, project so ultimately the project estimated time will be uh, shorter than what it has to be actually this may be trivial but essential to avoid missed timelines reworks and resource constraints so uh, to the extent possible we should get into the micro activity level let us see with a simple example let us take one project okay this is just an illustration it has gone to some level we will try to extend extend it to the micro activity level at least for one or two activities just to explain the project objective is i'm just taking a a, a case wherein i'm getting involved uh, the new program launch suppose the university decides to launch a new program what uh, what will the wbs look like the work breakdown structure look like the project objective is defined here and this itself is a complex activity right program new program launch itself is a complex activity and we are breaking it down to the first level which are one is the business plan devising the business plan creating a process framework for the entire project creating the infrastructure market mediation and program launch these are all the first level breakdown and we get into more detailed let us take here the business plan gets into target market selection and sizing this is the next level of detailing business strategy operations plan financial assessments 
these are all the things that we will identify uh, in the WBS for business plan. Process framework, we need an assessment, uh, sorry, we need to identify an assessment tool. Then we need to find a process for program and content design and we need to get into the performance assessment tool. Let us look at infrastructure. We need to create classroom and we need to create a lab for the new program. If you take the classroom and if you get into the micro activity, what are all the micro activities that you will uh, identify? One is that you need to identify the location where exactly you want to create it. Second, you need to identify the layout, how it will look like. Then you will identify how many seating will be needed. what kind of seating will be needed, what, how, many, uh, how many classrooms will be needed, how many washrooms will be needed depending upon the number of people, will you need something else, the infrastructure in terms of uh, the uh, teaching aids. And again, when you get into teaching aids, you will have several. One is the smart board, then video projector, etc. Once you identify the smart board, you will further identify certain activities like what kind of a smart board, who are all the prospective suppliers, what is the budget for it, etc. All these activities will be detailed. So when you get into more and more detailed activity like taking the quotations from various vendors, placing an order, expecting it from the order that is the lead time for delivery, etc. When you keep uh, identifying all these micro activities and assigning timelines for each one of them, when you add up all these times, you will create a complete network diagram which will give you as to what will be the total project lead time. And if you don't do the entire thing and generally say that, okay, business plan to create a business plan, we will take three weeks for creating an infrastructure. We will take six weeks. Suppose you go like that, you will find that most of the time you will be missing certain critical activities, which will take more than the time that you have estimated. And ultimately your project will not go on time. So the right approach for a project management is the first thing is that work breakdown structure, right? Next is that you have identified all the activities up to the micro level and you have also estimated the time for each of those activities up to the micro level. Now how do you depict it? You cannot depict a, a project in this form. This will not give you anything. This is okay for a slide but if you have to express it, if you have to execute it, and if you have to monitor it, this kind of a format will not be adequate. So we use something called a Gantt chart, which is a very popular and a very simple chart that can be used by anybody. You don't need ex any, ex uh, any, any extensive training on this. What is a Gantt chart? It's a tool to sequence the activities and estimate the timelines for each of them. So what essentially a Gantt chart is going to do is that it will just put all the activities in a sequence along with its time estimate, simple table, and it lists all major sub and micro activities. All levels of activities are listed there without exception and they are all arranged in the sequence of their performance as far as possible. Okay, There can be something which will start early late but you will be able to identify them and then sequence them appropriately. We will do it in the next slide. You will understand that. Estimate the timelines for each activity and fix or estimate overall project timeline. When you add up all the activity time Subtracting the ones which are overlapping with each other, you will be able to identify and find out what will be the estimated overall project time. Assign the responsibility for each of the activities. Identify any constraints if you uh, think can be for each of the activities and list them there so that you know that you are expecting a constraint there and you need to work on it uh, quite ahead of time. 
update the chart based on the progress. This is not just a chart that will depict all the activities with the timelines, but it also provides for you to update it so that at any point of time you will know that the project is running as per plan or it is running late or running ahead of time. So you will be able to monitor it. And this can be done at every single office who is involved in the project. The only low light for this Gantt chart is that it does not provide the relationship very clearly like the way in which a network diagram provides. That is the only low light. Um, so the relationship and the interdependence is something which is not very apparent in a Gantt chart. Though it is, it, is, it can be read from a Gantt chart with a little bit of scrutiny but it doesn't come out very apparently. Okay, let us see what is a Gantt chart. This is the format of a Gantt chart. There are something, there are, there are certain activities which are listed there. I don't want you to read them because it is not uh, essential, but the format is the one that is important for you. Okay, this has got the header here. Okay, and you have certain project details here. What you can write here is the project name, the project ID, the team members, you can write here and here you can write the date of, I mean the creation and the date by which it has to be uh, ended and uh, who is the owner of this whole project, then the review frequency. For example, here you will write the project name, the ID and the team. You will write all these three details here. Here you will write the date of start, the date of end and the owner. You may include a few more details if you want to include and here you write the project title. You can write that doubling the uh, doubling the contribution uh, doubling the contribution for so and so is something like a project title that you are program launch so and so you can write okay and here you have the um, the first header you have the project milestones or the activities you have something called p and a i will explain to you later that you have w1 w2 w3 like that the time scale is given here w1 w2 are the week numbers you can write it in write in terms of week or the dates or the months whatever and you have some blank space here for the remarks which can contain the responsibility and the constraints. Okay, what we do is that the first one is the major activity. We write the major activity, the complex activity we write here and then we write the sub activity, then we write the sub sub activity, then we write the uh, micro activity. Like that you keep writing. The numbering convention is something like this. If you call the complex activity as 1, the sub activity will be called as 1.1, the sub sub activity will be called as 1.1.1 and the micro activity will be called as 1.1.1.1 and the next micro activity will, will be called as 1.1.1.2. This way you can act, uh, write every single activity. In a complex project this will run into an A0 size. Okay. It will be a, a, a very large chart that will be displayed in the project office. And when you write all these activities, what you uh, do is that in the P, you have a P and a A here. P is the plan and A is the actual. In the P row, you will write the or you will shade the time for each of these activities. You will start from the micro activity. If the micro activity here is going to, I mean you have to uh, iterate it several times that the activity which has to start first, suppose you feel that this sub sub activity has to start and it is going to take two weeks, then you are going to share it like this. And then once you complete this activity, the next activity should start, then you will uh, share it like this. Like that you will keep sharing them. And when you complete the whole set of activity, you know that which is this is the starting point and the last activity, suppose it is ending here, then you know that this is the ending point. So the project timeline is 
week 1 to week 17 so the project timeline is 17 weeks the project lead time is 17 weeks is what you will know and you will also know which are all the activities that are to be performed on a given week and is it going as per plan or not it will be no known when you start updating the actual data suppose this is the plan and this is the actual the actual is slightly running late then you will mark it like this and you are expecting it to complete here so you are already running late by one week if there is one week of delay in this activity what kind of activity delay will take place here for the entire project will be known is it something that you can compensate this one week at any point of time or is it something that is going to end up with a delayed project by one week this will be known this can be handled in a as a hard copy or it can be done on a soft copy also you have something called ms projects which can actually uh, you will be able to build a gantt chart in it in which case whenever there is a change of schedule whenever there is a delay you will be able to update it so that you can uh, you can at any point of time know that a project is running against plan or against uh, I mean uh, running out of the plan. You can identify the responsibility for each of these activities and it, this pl plan can be shared with those people so they know that how important is their activity against uh, the rest of the plan and if you identify any constraint that will also be known so that you can take certain actions right ahead of time so that those constraints can be handled appropriately. So this is what a Gantt chart is about. Let us move on to the CPM. CPM is quite popular. Many of you will be knowing a critical path method is what is abbreviated as CPM. CPM uses one time estimate. For example, if you if you have seen in the in the activity, say infrastructure creation. Okay. In the infrastructure creation, suppose we say that classroom furnishing is one micro activity and we find that classroom furnishing is going to take six weeks of time. Suppose we estimate, you will just have one time estimate. Six weeks is the single estimate that you will use in the case of CPM. Whereas in the next method, which is PERT, you will use a different time scale. We will come to that in the next slide. So in a CPM, you will get just one time estimate. The critical path is the longest time path through a network. When we actually develop a network, you will understand this. But critical path is a sequence of activities which are connected with each other and that takes the longest time. If you start with one activity and then proceed with several activities and then you, you will have multiple activities as well and the one which has which takes the maximum time is the one that we call as the critical path. When we do an illustration you will understand this and the critical path is nothing but the summation of all the time, time, time uh, estimates of the activities which lie on the critical path. Critical paths represents, represent tasks that will delay the entire project if they are not completed on time. Once you identify a particular path as the critical path, if there is any delay in any one of the activity, the entire project is going to get delayed is what it signifies. So when you know that there is a critical path, you will be able to place your resources appropriately on the critical path so that you can avoid any delay and also you can keep your control system so close you can be monitoring it more frequently so that if there is any likely delay you will be able to act before it actually translates into a delay in the project. So these are all the advantages of knowing the critical path. When you know the critical path and when you are focusing here, it means that the other path is not as critical as this. So your focus will be on the critical path. More frequently you will be reviewing the critical path, but at the same time you will be reviewing the other path also, but not as frequently as the critical path. 
if you don't really review the other path over a period of time that will also get critical because if there is a delay which goes beyond its buffer then it, this can also become a critical path and that is the reason why you say that a project can have more than one critical path and a critical path can change uh, in between as well if there is a delay okay use the network to plan schedule monitor and control the project once you know that you this is the critical path you can plan it appropriately schedule them appropriately monitor them and control them pert on the other hand is pro program evaluation and review technique is the acronym pert uses three time estimates per activity which are all the three three time estimates optimistic time pessimistic time and most likely time optimistic time is something as the name signifies that you expect that everything is going to go as per your estimate the gods are going to be so kind that there will be no impediments to that activity and it will happen exactly uh, as per expectation if you ex if you if you have a estimate a time with that kind of a confidence then it will be an optimistic time a pessimistic time is something you think like yeah my god i think this today is not my day and every single activity is going to be delayed i'm not going to get everything as per my plan if you have that sort of an approach then that time will be pessimistic time which will be that mostly i'm going to Uh, take more than uh, what it will otherwise take is what your pessimistic time most likely time is a balanced time it is neither optimistic nor pessimistic so in a pert you will have three times this optimistic time is a pessimistic time is b and most likely time is m using these three time estimates you will find the standard time and it will be a plus b plus 4m divided by 6 why is it uh, this formula that is because it is going to follow a binomial distribution okay a critical path once you know the standard time the rest of the pro process steps are the same the critical path is computed as exactly as cpm because from these three time estimates you will find the standard time which is nothing but the t and you will use this t for finding the critical path like the way in which you will do for a cpm tool with this we conclude the session on project management theory we will take an illustration on the project management wherein we will be discussing the network diagrams and project crashing thanks for listening